Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three common mistakes or three common questions that I always see underneath each of my, uh, underneath my videos. And I quite often find them quite hard to explain the answer to because they, they, they need a, a, a much broader explanation. So I, they either need a verbal explanation or a physical demonstration explanation. I do my best replying to all questions, but uh, sometimes, as I say, it's, I, can only, I can only kind of do so much when I'm typing out an answer. But first, so for those of you who are new to my channel, hello and welcome. I just wanted to let you know that I have a one to 30 violin course that is available to download. Now this has come from my decades of teaching privately and also as a London College of Music examiner here in the UK. And it is because of this that I have put together the best home learning violin package available on the market. It is the first online interactive violin course that is available with not only videos, but also books as well. So the two are, are very interactive and it has been written in such a way that when you're reading the books and you're going through the videos and everything, it seems like I really am there with you in the room. My course does guarantee absolutely guarantees to take you from a complete beginner violinist, so you don't know anything about music, the violin, nothing, to a very decent, accomplished, intermediate player. That is a very bold statement to make, but I absolutely stand by that. And if you check out the reviews of my customers that have left them in my shop underneath that book series and other books as well, in my shop as well, then you will see that it, it, it is true. The proof is always in the pudding, as my music teacher always used to say to me. The links to buy the books and more information about the course will be underneath this video. And the second thing that I wanted to talk to you as well about is that a lot of you don't know that I actually have a Patreon page. Now, a Patreon is a place where you can pledge monthly amounts, depending on how much you pledge will depend on what, what benefits that you get. So often the more you pledge, the more benefits that you will get. But basically my, my Patreon page gives you access to hundreds of violin sheet music that I have arranged over not only just the years of me being on YouTube, but also really just just ever since I've been arranging music. So since I've, I've been teaching since I was 18 years old, so that's quite a long time ago. And all the music that I've kind of accumulated and, and arranged over, you know, over the years of me being on YouTube, which are, to which I've been on YouTube since 2011. So there is, I think there's around, off the top of my head, around 800 sheets, to, sheets of music. So it really is um, an unlimited resource of sheet music and there is no other place like it on the internet where you can get so much music that has been arranged for the violin for just so little money. You can cancel your membership at any time, but you will get access to that as well as violin backing tracks that go with some of the music. Not all of the music has backing tracks, but some of them do. Um, sometimes I will write blog posts um, and put extra videos up. So just a few little extra bits and bobs. So I'll put a link to Patreon underneath so you can check that out if you want to. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is bowing in the right place. So a lot of people say that their, their tone isn't very uh, nice. There's something about it that doesn't sound quite right and they're, they're scratchy. Now, without seeing that individual or that person, it's very hard to, to remedy. So I kind of have to um, guess what could be happening here and sort of take into account um, all of those, those years that I've spent teaching, I've spent 20 years teaching students and I kind of think to myself, right, what are the top reasons of why those students are, are scratchy? So most of the time, it is because you're not bowing in the right place and the E string is the worst offender for that. So let's see if you do this. The way you know if your E string you're bowing your E string in the wrong place is if you have rosin on the wood part here. Now that's because, because when you're bowing down, instead of staying on the E string, you are nudging that bow slightly further down. So if I do it this way, perhaps, that's your E string, but a lot of people then angle their bow down there so it actually touches the, the wood, the side of it there. So it would be something like this. So does that sound familiar to some of you? So if you play like that, that's because you're not keeping your arm consistent. I'll show you again. 
It's actually quite difficult for me to do because I, 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 don't, I don't do that. So what that is, is just uh, get, getting, your, getting your arm level correct and consistent. So you want to get your, your level. Um, again, I've spoken about this in um, a, a few weeks ago in, in one of my, my videos. I'll put a link to that underneath it. And that is just about string isolation, getting your um, hitting others, not hitting other strings rather, and getting your arm level correct. So you want to get the level of the E string, so which will be about here, D strings up there, uh, sorry, A strings there, D string, G string, D string, A string. E string. So we've got the four different levels of the strings and I said in that video it was about going up in an elevator or in a lift for example. So the E string is here but when you're kind of lowering your, your arm and your arm is moving around that's when you're going to hit other strings. So you're hitting other strings because this bow isn't bowing in one consistent straight line. It's this arm here is not staying perfectly here. You're bowing down and then it's can you see the bow's going down? Sorry, my arm is going down as I'm bowing up. My arm is coming up. So that's fine if I'm going to be changing the strings to wherever it is I want to change them. But if I just want to bow the A string, this arm here hasn't moved. It is in this position here. And the only thing that's moving is my elbow. So you should only be bowing from the elbow. If you bow from the elbow, then your bow is going to stay perfectly straight. It's when you're bowing, it's when you're bowing up and down, you should be bowing horizontal. But when you're bowing vertically with your arm as well, that's when you're going to come unstuck and hit those other strings. So it's about having the discipline of keeping your arm in the right place. But the one thing that people do with the E string, a common mistake, is to nudge it down too far and, and hit the wood there. And you can always tell because, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see, so I don't have much rosin on my bow, but you can always tell by the rosin, if you've got rosin on that part of the wood there. I suppose the same goes for the G string. Some people do. Some people do, and you hear that kind of where the, the bow is actually hitting the wood and obviously no sound is, is coming out because there's no grip on the wood. And again, you'll see the rosin on there. Okay, the second kind of common mistake, um, not necessarily something that I can physically show you on the violin, but a common mistake is people ignoring mistakes. When they're playing, they just kind of, um, they, they don't really listen. So as beginners, we, we, we wanna play. We wanna play a piece of music and it's very easy to get caught up in the midst and in the throes of playing a piece of music. And you know, we think we sound really good and it sounds great. And we, we kind of hit a little bumble and, and we fumble around some of the notes and we sort of, you know, lift up the rug, brush it under, put the rug back down again and just carry on and sort of go, nobody heard that, did they? But that's the worst thing that you can do. So this is where self-discipline comes in and this is where you need to be very strict with yourself and teacher yourself. Now this is ideal when an actual physical teacher comes in because then you've got someone, someone like me perhaps sitting there saying, no, stop. I'm a very strict teacher and the minute I hear something that is a mistake, it's a different, I can always tell the difference between a student playing a piece of music and they've just sort of, you know, their fingers have just muddled up the notes, something that they've, they've never done before, but you know, I can tell it was just like a little blip, nothing, nothing major and they'll probably never do it again. And I can tell the difference between that and a passage that they just physically don't know how to play. They can't get their fingers around and it's just a complete mess. And that's when I will say, stop. And then we will focus in and we will go over that bit. I'll find out what the problem is. So I'll get them to play that passage through and we'll figure out whether it's just, you know, maybe a bow thing or their finger's not in the right place or maybe there's a better, um, a better kind of, a better way that they can uh, go into position or different fingering or, you know, whatever, whatever the solution may be. So you, you have to teach it yourself and you have to stop yourself from making those mistakes. It's fine if you want to just play the piece through as like a little bit of a warm up, just to familiarize yourself with the piece. Do that once or twice, fine. You can skim over the mistakes. That's, I don't really see an issue with that. If you are then gonna go back over those mistakes that you've made and then really kind of hone in, you know, get the magnifying glass on them and start examining those pieces and working in on those little passages before you play it all again. So a lot of people just don't do that. So then you end up practicing something and thinking it's right. And that's, 
that's the kind of, that's the real true discipline that you need as, as a musician. You can't afford to be lazy and you can't afford to let things just, you know, slip through the net and just brush them under the rug, so to speak. You have to, you have to go through everything with a fine to tooth comb. And a good way of actually doing that to teach her yourself is, dare I say it, record yourself. So nobody likes recording themselves playing. I, I'm, I, I can stand testament to that. So as soon as I press record, on the camera i mean it's it's literally it's it's like i've never played the violin before it's unbelievable so it happens to everybody but you get to a point you know it doesn't bother me so much now but you know back in the day when i first started recording it was just i press record on the on on the video and then my hands would be shaking and i i couldn't you know i couldn't hold the violin and, and it was just a nightmare so you know we we can all relate to that so don't worry about that but once you've kind of put the video on you know, and the video has been going, you know, recording for 10, 15 minutes, you'll soon forget about it. And then you'll, then, then when you start playing your piece through, you'll, you'll get a good performance out of it or good enough that you will then be able to tell, you know, what, what passages you need to work on. So what I would advise you do, imagine you've got over the initial fright of putting the, the camera on record, record yourself playing that piece of music. Then you want to play that back. You don't have to watch it. You can just record the sound if you like and have the music in front of you and make sure you go through that music as if you are re-analyzing it back. Now you are the teacher and the video, you in the video is now the student. So you'd be doing my job essentially. So then you'd wanna go through that and every time you heard a bit of a, a bit of a flump, then you'd wanna circle that bit, you know, next bit, next bit that doesn't sound right, circle that bit. So you're just going through circling it. You know when you used to hand in your English homework um, at, at school, the teacher would just get a big red pen and circle bits and underline things. So that's essentially what you're doing. And then that's really the quickest, easiest and most efficient way that you can then just go into the music and start focusing on what the problem is. Okay, and the, the third most common I get, and this is mostly from absolute total newbies. So people who have just had a violin arrive at their doorstep, they ripped it out of the box, so excited like a kid on Christmas day, and they've got the violin out, they know to put the violin under their chin, they get the bow out, and all of a sudden there's no sound on the bow. Now it's, it's, it's easily done and it's very easily remedied, but it's just a very common mistake. And what people don't realize is that you need to rosin the bow. Now, again, I have done a video on how to rosin the bow and how much to rosin the bow and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'll put a link to that. I'm not gonna go over uh, how to rosin the bow, but you will need to rosin the bow. So uh, this this is my rosin that, that I have. It's Sartori rosin. Again, I'll this, this is all in the video that I did the other day. But as soon as you get your violin uh, sorry as soon as you get your violin and bow out of the case at the end the little end piece of the case you'll see some rosin and what you'll need to do is put a good amount of rosin on your bow to start with before you will get a sound so the rosin is going to provide grip on the bow but bearing in mind as well that if you've bought a student quality violin then your bow is going to be synthetic hair so it isn't going to be the best for gripping um, rosin on brand new hair that doesn't you know it's almost like freshly washed hair it, there's so much slide in it it's it's, it's going to take a little while to get that rosin going but I do explain that in that rosin video so go head underneath here and, and check that out if you want to know exactly how to rosin and how much and you know I do go into detail but suffice to say that the reason why you're not getting any sound out of your violin uh, or out of the bow rather is because there is no rosin on the bow and you do need to rosin the bow so that was it the second video of the three most common mistakes issues concerns that i see underneath in the comments underneath my videos on a daily basis thank you very much for watching i hope this has helped you and i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye